Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so just to answer a quick question on how we measure the voltage and the, and the current on the oscilloscope. Uh, on the oscilloscope, we'll see something like a sine wave. And so in this case, let's say it's the, the voltage sine wave. So what I've put here, that will be your, 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 uh, your voltage level, voltage amplitude. So if we measured between there and there, that's your voltage from peak to peak, or VPP. Um, what we actually do is we measure the, the RMS, the root mean squared, um, which is just a function which is done automatically. But basically, it tells you what your, your voltage level is, and it's usually around there. That's your voltage RMS. That's done automatically on the scope. So um, if there's a red pen somewhere, that will be the voltage, thank you. And you'll also have a frequency, okay? And that is literally how often you get this. So this, this axis along here is in time, okay? And to measure your frequency, you're measuring between one peak and the next. And that's your, um, that's your frequency. And in this case, the frequencies we've been looking at are between around 100 to 200 hertz, or 200 cycles per second. So that's one cycle. Mm -hmm. um, so that's your, that's your voltage curve. And then you'll see um, a current curve. Now, the sort of thing we've been looking at at the moment is they, they've been in phase. So we've seen, well, just for argument's sake, something like this so that's your your current and again you just measure you're measuring the current that's the current peak to peak and again you can then measure the the current rms and then to calculate the power we take these two terms and if we assume they're in phase for the moment we know the, the power equals, or the power equals the voltage times the current. Very simple. Now, there may be a situation, we haven't seen it yet, where they're out of phase. So you might have the voltage, which does something. And perhaps the current, let's say, is something like this. Okay, so they're out of phase, and what that means is there is a, a difference, a phase difference. So what we do there to calculate the power, and this still, this still holds true for when they're in phase, is for each data point in time, we do the voltage, whatever that might be. So let's take this, let's take this data point, for example. We'll do the, the voltage times the current. And that will give you, uh, that will give you, uh, that will plot you another, another sine wave, which if I had another color, let's just say for argument's sake, it will give you probably something like this. Uh, probably look like this. And that will be your power. And then all we do is we take the RMS through that, and that is your power, RMS. So then you have your power, right? And that's taking into consideration the voltage and the phase and the phase difference between the two. That's real power. This is where people often go wrong when they don't consider the phase difference. So uh, an example of that is if, if, the, if the phase between the voltage and the current is 90 degrees out of phase, you might have a huge voltage and a huge current. But if they're 90 degrees out of phase, that's actually zero power. It's purely reactive power. What I've seen in the past measuring similar types of devices, you get huge voltage uh, on the output side, and you think, oh, this is exciting. But then you see this 
this big phase difference, so it means that the power is actually not very great at all. It's a very reactive, it's a very reactive power, which isn't any good for, for powering devices. I think this is quite a common thing with these types of devices, is thinking you've got this huge voltage and, and current and it's usable power, which may be, which may be measured using a, a multimeter. But this will tell you the, the size of the voltage and it'll tell you the size of the current, but it won't tell you the phase difference between them. And so people make the common mistake, this is assuming you're measuring AC and not DC, people make the common mistake of just multiplying the voltage by the current to get the power, but it doesn't include the phase difference. So this is why you need, you need an oscilloscope if you're measuring AC power. <laughs>